Hey guys, hope everybody's good and succeeding in life. Um, so this video today is all going to be about DNS and specifically internal DNS and how that um, relates to GCP. So I'm not really going to go into detail for DNS, but for those who do not know what DNS is, uh, DNS stands for domain name system or server. And the whole point behind DNS is how do you resolve a domain name? So like something like uh, google.com that humans understand and translate it into something that machines understand, which is typically an IP address of a server that's serving that uh, domain. So 35.178.22.19. I don't know, 19. So DNS sits in between and tries its best to figure out, okay, a user seems to have typed in this. Um, what is the actual IP address that computers understand that I can use in place of this? And that's what DNS does. So internal DNS, um, instead of now external traffic coming in the same way a user would search for google.com. So internal DNS places focus within a network in your GCP virtual private cloud. So here we are in front of the Netherlands data center. This is Europe West 4. And we have three instances running all within the same zone. So we have, I know, instance one somewhere. Over here. Let's assume this is uh, zone A because I know we have three instances running there. By the way, these are the same instances we created um, when we were talking about subnets. So let's say we have instance one over here, instance two somewhere here, and instance three also here, all within the same zone. They're also all within the same subnet. And two of these are within the same subnet, but all of them are within the same network. So if network is represented by brown, which is not the best color, we know that there's a network here. We know that two of them are within the same subnet and all three of them are in the same zone. So how does DNS come into this? Well, we do know the IP addresses of these virtual machines. We've seen them before. How do we swap those IP addresses, these uh, numbers over here, with actual domain names that are more human friendly and it can actually be thrown within your config files. Um, you actually come to find, especially when using services like Kubernetes, um, having domain names is quite helpful as DNS will store the domain name um, within some form or tag. And even though your IP addresses can change behind the scenes um, and it'll find a way to resolve them at the end of the day. So let's look at GCP and how internal DNS works. All right, so for those who are new to this video, um, we created three different instances, all within the same zone over here. It's important to note that these two instances, instance one and instance two, are all within the same subnet, but instance three is within a different subnet because you can create multiple subnets within the same region, within the same zone. They can cross zones, um, but subnets cannot cross regions. Just keep that in mind. So the goal is to be able to swap out these IP addresses for actual names. And how we'll do that is through the use of DNS specifically internal DNS. So within your GCP console, we'll go all the way and find network services. So you guys will probably have to scroll down somewhere, somewhere around here. And we'll select cloud DNS. So if you do not have any other DNS policies, you should see a similar page. We're going to go ahead and create zones. And so zone for DNS is simply a namespace. Once again, an abstraction. And the idea behind a zone is that it holds information or separates information between your public and your private zones. And I'll talk about what those mean in a second. So a private zone is what we're trying to go for in this particular video, because we're trying to connect uh, networks that exist within Google's VPC. They're internal to Google's network. On the other hand, a public zone is one that now recognizes external traffic coming in from outside the network. So in our case, because this is internal DNS, we're going to create a private zone. You can give it whatever name you want. Let's call it once again, our private zone bad name. I'm not that creative. We know this already. So DNS name, um, this is going to be the actual, uh, the last part or the domain name uh, within the URL. Let's just call it our zone.com.internal. By the way, you do not have to have .com or anything in it. I'm just kind of putting things together. So in my experience uh, and from what I've seen is internal networks tend to have a DNS name that has an internal suffix at the end. Um, let's change this. This should, be, this should be better. Let's call it. Yeah, let's leave it like that. Give a description. And important, we have to select a network. Now with this, you can actually select a multiple networks. But in our case, we're going to select our network. You can select default and whatever it is, but let's just focus on this one for now. And we'll go ahead and create a zone. So now that the overarching abstraction has been created, um, our private zone has been created. So let's jump in and create some uh, records. And so a record is what actually matches your IP address. So that IP address of our VMs are 10.100, whatever, whatever, to a domain name that we give. And this r.zone.com.internal is going to be the suffix part 
let's say that's what's over here and then we can give let's say that let's assume this was instance one this is its ip address we can give it whatever name you want to call it let's say vm1 dot rzone.com dot internal which is all this part of here i'm just lazy i didn't want to write that there so we can swap out their ip address for an actual uh domain name and that's what we're trying to achieve so let's go ahead and create some record sets so here are our ip addresses we'll use them as a reference let's create a record set and uh, the resource record type we're going to be using is an A record. The multiple different records, we're going to focus on A because that represents an IPv4 address, which is what we have here. So instead of calling instance one, let's call it VM1. And the IP address of VM1 is 10.100.0.2. So basically, instead of me having to keep on using this IP address, I can now use this URL, vm1.our.zone.com.internal. A lot of dots. Let's do the same for the next two. Cool, so we've created A records for all our virtual machines. So these IP addresses can now be reached by typing this in. Let's create one more record called a C name. And a C name is almost like an alias or like an other name that you wanna give it. So the way you use C names um, in this case, so let's say you're running on a production app and your VM1 or instance one actually has Nginx running within it. So we can actually just call it Nginx. And we can use the C name to re refer to VM1. That hour.zone.com.internal. By the way, you guys can name this suffix whatever it is you want. You can follow organizational policies, whatever seems to work best for you. Don't follow my example if you don't like it the name. Awesome, we've created these four records. So let's SSH into these VMs over here and see how the internal DNS resolves the addresses. So our VMs are up and running. Let's use Netcat and try and connect using our DNS names. And let's assume this is gonna be the server. So we'll listen on port 8080. I think our fire rules from previous videos still apply, um, but don't worry about that if you haven't watched that video. So this one's listening. This is going to be a server. It's listening on port 8080, and this is the one we're going to. And we're trying to. This is our client. So this is our client, and we want to connect to instance two. But now instead of using the IP address for instance two, we're going to go ahead and use the domain name we created. vm 02hourzonecominternal And let's try and type in some stuff. Bam. Awesome. It actually came through. So that goes to show DNS has registered this um, name change and that we can now start using these names in place of the actual IP addresses. And like I've said before, this does have its benefits. So you're no longer you having to worry about IP addresses and in frameworks and platforms such as like Kubernetes and stuff where you actually have an abstraction um, such as DNS and endpoints objects. Um, and the fact that your containers or pods can go down at any time. So trying to keep IP addresses for ephemeral containers is never the best idea. And sometimes having the DNS name out there is good because the underlying Kubernetes infrastructure can sort out an IP address for that domain name that you're already given. Awesome. Let's actually do this vice versa. Let's use the C name. So I'd assume. So let's let this one be the server and see LP8080. Let's run that and let this one connect. Uh, let's do the same thing with VM1. Hour.zone.com.internal8080. And that's right. Hey. And hey should be received there. Sweet. Let's use a C name now. Um, let's restart the server on this side. The C name and call our Nginx. Remember, Nginx is the C name for VM1. Let's start this. And it shows. Awesome. So this has been simply a video that shows how internal DNS works in Google Cloud. Um, using DNS names and names that humans can read is typically better for a lot of reasons. And hopefully this video showed you how, guys how to go about doing that with Google Cloud. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Feel free to like the video, subscribe to, to my channel if you like what I'm doing. And yeah, if you feel led to support, please go ahead, man. My Patreon's in the description. And yeah, let me know what videos you guys want to see as well. Um, I like to do slightly smaller videos, but I do intend on doing like large architecture, you know, designing more complicated systems. Um, but I like to keep the examples pretty simple so that I can actually squeeze that within a video. I'm also planning on doing some live ones where from scratch, I just go no editing, um, even though I basically barely do any editing. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. See you in the next one.